ഫോർ loving the family of prophet alayhi salatu wassalam and ala hazrat rahmatullahi ta'ala alay there is a lot to learn so be with us from start to end insha Allah azza wa jal it will be an amazing program for you to watch dear respected viewers my sheikh tariqat amir of hal sunnah hazrat alama maulana muhammad ilyas attar qadri damat barakatuhum al aliya gives us a beautiful mindset we should not forget to make good intentions before we perform any good deed any permissible task i make this intention inshallah i will deliver this program for the pleasure of allah tabarak wa ta'ala you can make this intention that you will watch from start to end you will remember what you learn act upon and pass this knowledge on to others too so be with us inshallah azza wa jal today we have got our brother waqas with us and brother muzammil inshallah who will recite naat for us yes we have got a segment in which inshallah azza wa jal we will be selecting one naat of mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam written by ala hazrat ali rahma which will be explained in english and brother muzammil will recite that for us so it's going to be an interesting program dear respected viewers let's go towards our panel assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh fi kasbi how are you alhamdulillah rabbil alamin how are you okay jazakallah thank you for coming welcome you in this in this program assalamu alaikum wa zamil how are you doing wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah rabbil alamin how are you alhamdulillah welcome ji wa kasbi today inshallah we will be talking about loving the family of the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam respecting sadat the progeny of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wasallam and especially sayyidi ala zat ash-sha' imam muhammad raza khan alayhi rahmatu rahman what sort of reverence he possessed and he had a love for sadat would you please start alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa salatu was salam ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursalin amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim sayyidi ala hazrat rahmatu alayhi demonstrated to the muslim world how to show respect and reverence to the descendants of the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was a prime example of showing respect and adab and reverence to the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his entire life is flowed with examples depicting his love for the noble family of the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam so his whole life you can and one example is given that once the sayyidi ala hazrat rahmatullah alayhi he was busy writing and in his vicinity of his home or where he was writing he lived a young child who was playing when there was a young child every time his child crossed by the door said the ala hazrat rahmatullah he should stand up and then he sat down again carried writing the child passed again said the ala hazrat got up again again he sat down somebody asked him the huzur why you keep standing up down up down what's the issue he said this child is playing outside he is from the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even it's mentioned up to 10 times See the other has up down up down up down you sit because this child is from the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam out of the other out of the respect i'm standing up for this child mm-hmm. and you imagine that this is the imam of the ahl sunnah the imam of his time the mufti of his time and he's standing up for a young child why mm-hmm. we are taught alhamdulillah you know, stand up for the elders stand up for the ulama very good but this is say the other has standing up for a young child why just because he is from the family and he is a descendant of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah akbar allah akbar the respect of this this adab and respect it reflects from the that of sayyidi ala hazrat rahmatullah ta'ala the ram sayyid ayub ali sahib uh, he says that uh, he himself and his brother sayyid qanaat ali they went to do bai'ah 
in the court of Sayyidi Ala Rahmatullahi Ta'ala. And it was time of Eid al-Fitr. And after Salah, Sayyidi Ala Rahmatullahi Ta'ala used to meet and greet with people. And the people would come and shake hands. Subhanallah. When uh, Sayyid Qana'at Ali, he came and he met with Sayyidi Ala Rahmatullahi Ta'ala. Ala Ali Rahma, he kissed the hands of Sayyid Qana'at Ali. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. And he became scared what happened. Why such a great Imam and scholar is kissing my hands? Allahu Akbar. Then other, those that were close to the court of Sayyidi Ala Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, when he mentioned this what happened, they said that this is the same routine of Sayyidi Ala Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, that uh, whenever Eid comes, or Eid Al, both of the Eids come, Sayyidi Ala Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali shake hands with people. And the very first Sayyid comes, to meet with Sayyidi Ala Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, he kisses the hands of that Sayyid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The Islamic brothers, did you see that? SubhanAllah, what a great Imam of his time. And he is kissing the hands of Sayyid. And what happens today, if we get a little name or fame, then people, if they come and kiss our hands, right? Especially I'm talking about some people who are a bit religious and they come close to them and they want to kiss their hands. I'm not talking to about everyone, but I'm just trying to give an example. Sometimes people become big-headed. People come and kiss my hands, Mahazal, that should not be the case. But look at the Zat of Sayyidi Ala Rahmatullahi Ta'ala. People wanted to kiss his hands. Right? He wanted to uh, come and get his company. Allah, whereas he is kissing the hands of Sayyid. Why? To show respect to the court of Mustafa Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam because this is Ali Nabi. Allahu Akbar. And do you respect me with let me tell you, this practice of Sayyidi Ala Azad Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, it is even seen today Mashallah. in the Zat of Sayyidi Amir of Hali Sunnah. And I've seen from my own eyes when Sayyid meets with Amir of Hali Sunnah, Amir of Hali Sunnah kisses his hands. Mashallah. So this is Subhanallah, uh, another beautiful way to show love and reverence and respect and adab for the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala. Alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Even uh, I've seen Amir al-Sunnat, when even somebody says that my name is Sayyid, with all the telephone call, he says, like Allah this, Allah he kisses his hand, just by hearing the name so Sayyid. So this is the teaching of Allah Hazrat, which has been passed on to Amir al-Sunnat, which Alhamdulillah, he is trying to pass on to us, is that the viewers, that this is the other respect we should have. It's mentioned that Allah Hazrat, Rahmatullah when he used to give out things, obviously people used to come to him, he used to give yeah, out sure. things. He used to give one to everybody. But whenever a Sayyid used to come, we used to give that Sayyid two things. We used to give them extra preference, give them two gifts as well. So Alhamdulillah, these are the ways that we should also, when we find out somebody is a Sayyid, Alhamdulillah, this, the descendants of the Prophet Sallallahu are in our communities today. Uh, there's many Muslims, Alhamdulillah, who are descendants from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when we find out somebody is a Sayyid, we should take blessings from them, get to ask from them, kiss their hands, you know, and show adab and respect. Remember, one thing is very important here while we are talking about the respecting of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One is to give a da'wah that we love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then when you love somebody, you don't just love that person. You love everything that is attached to them. Their family, their children, their friends as well. So this is Alhamdulillah, which is, which is Allah Hazrat Rahmatullah is showing to us that when you love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't just love the Prophet. Every person that is attached, the Prophet Sahabas, the Prophet's families, the Prophet's blessed wives, the Prophet's grandchildren, the Prophet's Sahaba Ikram and his, his companions, we are told that we must love them as well. You can't pick up somebody says to me, oh, because my, I love you, I've got love for you, but I don't love your child. And I'll think in my mind, what kind of love are you showing to me? So we need to make sure when we love the Prophet وسلم, we love every person, every Sahaba which is attached to the Prophet وسلم, as well. Subhanallah, and it is said, Teri nasle paak mein hai, bacha bacha noor ka, tu hai aile noor tera, sab gharana noor ka. Do you respect the viewers of Madani Shail? Why Sayyidi Ala Azad Rahmatullahi Ta'ala loved Sadat? Why did he love the family of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam? Because it is a saying of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in the summary of the hadith is, teach your children love of Quran, my love, and love of my family. So these three things, have been mentioned by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa that we should give as a gift to our children. Now, nowadays in this dunya, what's going on? Are we teaching Quran the way we should teach 
the gift Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam asked us to give to our children when it comes to do tarbiyat of our children. And inshallah we'll talk about how did Sayyidi Allah rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi instilled love of Ahlul Bayt in his children, right? Because he had that love, that reverence, that adab, but he also imparted that in children because he followed this beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam that you teach your children three things. What are they? Quran, love of the Prophet, and love of the family of the Prophet. So what's going on nowadays? Are we giving the true teachings of Quran to our children? I think we are more towards this dunya. We want materialism. We want that our child, uh, he gets fame and name and you see, uh, he becomes a businessman or gets a good job uh, or studies very high five degrees and all that. What about learning Quran? What about loving Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam? What about getting the degree of love of Mustafa Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam? I would like to ask you, could you please shed a bit light? What about loving the Sahadat and the family of the Prophet? Because these are the things Rasulullah Ali Salatu Wasalam asked us to give as a gift to our children. Are we giving that? What do you see in the society? Unfortunately, today a large number of Muslims are far away from our deen. For example, if I ask myself or the views of Madhi Chan with your children, ask them that can you name me 10 people from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 10 of his companions or his children, can you name me 10? You know, play a game with the children once. Get a pen and paper, get two pens and paper and say to your kids, Peter, write down, son, daughter, write down 10 footballers' names. They write them down easily. Write 10 cricket players' names. Write down 10 celebrities' names. Easily they write down. Then on the other side, right? Okay, son, daughter, write down the name of ten companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Write down the name of ten surahs of the Quran. Write down the name of ten Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then assess them. Take the exam. That's your exam done. Now assess this exam. The page will be full. Assess this exam. Your page will be empty. This shows where your child is today. This is your result in front of you. That till today, what I have to my child? The question is that we're talking about children. How can we teach our children until we get our knowledge ourselves? Where have we gone? We have been busy in the dunya, making money, making a big house, nice car, good education. We didn't have time to go and learn our deen. So what are we going to put into our children? But it's still not too late. Alhamdulillah, organizations such as Dawat Islami is still out there. Going into home by home, but through Madhi Channel, through these courses, online courses, in the masajids, in the masjids, in the madrasas, Still instilling Ishq Mustafa and the love of the family of the Prophet If we can't give this to our children ourselves, we don't have the knowledge, then we must send them to such places where they can get this essential knowledge. This is essential for this time, this day and age. If we don't get it today, our future generations, where will we be? Today we can't name 10 Prophets. Today we can't name 10 Sahaba. What will happen to the next generation? What will these children teach our future children? This is where we are today. And this is the why the Muslim Ummah at this moment is in difficulty. In trouble because we have forgotten the Quran, we have got, forgotten the Hadith, we have forgotten the Sahaba, we've gone to dunya, dunya, dunya. This is why we are in this state today. So I urge the views of Muslim channel, give time to your children. Give, make them, get them good education, good worldly as well. But don't forget your deen. Leave such children that tomorrow, they'll be the ones to raise your hands and do dua for, the, for their deceased parents. Not the children who say, Oh, mom and dad have gone, but what do they leave us? Right. And they also instill the, the love of the Prophet and love of love the must... family of the Prophet and Sahaba Ikram in their hearts. But, That's where, very important. but how will they teach them if they don't have knowledge themselves? True. Again, same thing again, send them to such places. Attach them to Dawat Islam. Sure. Send them on the Madhuri Kaflis, in the Ishtamas, in these gatherings, where your children can go and learn these things. And inshallah, you see the benefit in the dunya and the akhirah that when we leave these children behind, Inshallah, they'll be the one who will be Sadqa Jari for us as well, Inshallah. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Dear respected viewers of Madhani Sharon, beautiful message. Uh, let's now uh, include one segment in this program, that is Kalami Raza. In this segment, what we do, we select one Kalam of Allah, Allah Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi, and we try to explain that. Uh, and also, our brother, uh, Inshallah, he will recite that for us. Dear respected viewers, today we have selected Munajat, right? Uh, it's a dua in the court of Allah wa Taala, but this is a masterpiece from the poetry of Allah Taala. He has 
میں دعا ان دی کوٹ آف اللہ تبارک و تعالی بٹ ہاؤ بیوٹیفلی ہی از پریزڈ مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم ایٹ دا سیم ٹائم بیکاز ہی از برنگنگ دی وسیلہ آف رسول اللہ صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم ان ہز دعا ون آف دی بیسٹ وسیلہ ٹو پریزنٹ ان دی کوٹ آف اللہ تبارک و تعالی دی وسیلہ آف ہز بلوڈ پروفٹ صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم ان ہز بیوٹیفل ریٹن دیٹ ان دس بیوٹیفل کلام انشاءاللہ ہم ویل انکلوڈ دیٹ رحمت اللہ تعالیٰ سے یا الہی ہر جگہ تیری عطا کا ساتھ ہو یا الہی ہر جگہ تیری عطا کا ساتھ ہو جب پڑے مشکل شہر مشکل کشا کا ساتھ ہو ہیر آنا حضرت رحمت اللہ تعالیٰ سنگ او اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ می یو گرانٹڈ بلیسنگ بی ود اس ایٹ آل ٹائمس ایوری وے جب پڑے مشکل شہ مشکل کشا کا ساتھ ہو وینیور آئی ایم انفلکٹڈ ان اینی سارٹ آف پرابلم کلیمٹی ایشو دین دی پرابلم سولونگ مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم میں ہی بی ود می سبحان اللہ ڈیئر ریسپیکٹڈ ویورز آف مدنی چینل ناؤ وین ہی ٹاکس اباؤٹ مشکل واٹ سارٹ آف کلیمٹیز ہی از ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ اللہ اکبر ہی دین مینشنز دوز کلیمٹیز واٹ اے پرسن کین انفلیکٹ اینڈ دے کین بی فال and he talks in the other ash'ar and the couplets maybe we will learn them uh, the calamity of naz'a at the time when we will be dying that will be the real calamity we think these calamities of the world are the problems of for us the issues the actual thing is that we should take our iman safe and sound with us and if that calamity comes that problem comes when it is hard for us to take our iman And he is coming with us, we should think for that. But subhanallah, he seems to talk about that calamity. When a person will be in a difficult time, then in further ashar, he also talk about the calamity in the grave. A person will be in difficult time in the grave when there will be darkness. Then he further talks about the calamity and the times when resurrection will happen, when the day of reckoning will come, inshallah. We'll talk about the different calamities he talks about and how beautifully he puts the wasila of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in the quote of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and he makes dua. Let's listen to this asha, inshallah. Ya ilahi har jaga teri ata ka saath ho Ya ilahi har jaga teri عطا کا ساتھ ہو جب پڑے مشکل شہ مشکل کشا کا ساتھ ہو جب پڑے مشکل شہ مشکل کشا کا ساتھ ہو بی رسپیکٹ ویورز ان نیکسٹ کپلٹ آن حضرت رحمت اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ از رائٹنگ یا الہی بھول جاؤں نزع کی تکلیف کو شاد یہ دیدار حسن مصطفیٰ کا ساتھ ہو اللہ اکبر وچ بیوٹیفل دعا ہی از میکنگ دی کوٹ آف اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ آن حضرت علیہ رحمت اللہ سینگ یا اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ ونی دی تائم آف دیت کمز ون دی پینز ان ایگنیز آف دیت ارائیو دیت تائم ارائیو اللہ اکبر ات دیت مومنٹ ان تائم می دی ویجن آف مصط his beauty is with me and I see the vision of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama shadiye didar husn Mustafa ka saath ho the beauty of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama and shadi here refers to that uh, glad tiding and happiness of seeing the vision of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama and he says if this will be the case if I will have the vision of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama before me at the time of my death then all the agonies, all the pains of death will go away. And subhanAllah, ulama have written a beautiful point in this regard. Dear respected viewers of Madani channel, ulama, they say that whenever you make dua in the court of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, you should ask, Ya Allah, when I die at that moment in time, I see the vision of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And they write the reason why I should ask this dua. They say that when it was the time 
of Sayyidina Yusuf ala Nabiina alayhi salatu was salam and Sayyidina Yusuf's beauty ala Nabiina alayhi salatu was salam was such that when he went in front of the women of Misr, Allahu Akbar, they were indulged in the beauty of Sayyidina Yusuf ala Nabiina alayhi salatu was salam. They cut their fingers and they did not feel the pain. They did not realize that their fingers were cut. That's how ulama they say, when those women of Egypt, they cut their fingers, they did not realize the pain because they were lost in the beauty of Sayyidina Yusuf, Allahu Akbar. What about the beauty of Allahu Ghani, the leader, Allahu Ghani, Imam Al-Anbiya, leader of Sayyidina Yusuf Al Nabiyyina alayhi salatu was salam, his beauty, what can you talk about? If someone will see the beauty at the time of death, then definitely the way those women did not realize the pain, that person will forget and he will inshallah not realize the pain and agonies of death. And that's why we should also make dua, Ya Ilahi, Bhul jau, naz aki taklif ko. Ya ilahi bhul jau, naz aki taklif ko. Ya ilahi bhul jau, naz aki taklif ko shadiye didar e husn e mustafa ka saath ho shadiye didar e husn e mustafa ka do you respect me this one more couplet inshallah uh, we'll include and then we'll come back to our topic Hazrat is talking about another calamity he's talking about another difficult time when will it be on the day of judgment when due to heat our tongues will come out it will, they will hang out and he's talking about that moment in time and what is he requesting in the court of Allah Taala? What dua is he making for that difficult time? He says, Ya ilahi, jab zabane bahir aayin piyas se, sahibe kafir shahe judo ata ka saath ho. Allah Hukma, he says, oh Allah, when tongues will hang due to immense thirst, let us be blessed by the generous king, the distributor of kafir. Subhanallah. In this couplet, Allah is reminding us of the difficult situation on the day of Qiyamah when the intensity of the heat will be beyond what we could even imagine. The great scholars, including Huzur Sayyidi Sadr Sharia, have mentioned that there is none that can actually understand the intensity of the heat of that critical hour. On the day of Qiyamah, due to the intensity of the heat, the tongue will become so dry that it will feel like thorns. Allahu Akbar. The tongues of the sun will be hanging out of their mouths. Sayyidi Ala Rahmatullahi Ta'ala is explaining that on the day, nothing will be able to quench our thirst except the generosity of the distributor and the owner of Kothar by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. That is Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam azad and the respective viewers. This couplet can be understood in two ways. One is that beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam will quench the thirst of his thirsty ummah on that day by offering them the heavenly drink of kothar which will quench their thirst forever. The other is that when the ummah and those who truly love Nabi Karim alayhi salatu was salam see his beloved and radiant face, subhanallah, they will forget the difficulties and harshness of that day as they will quench their thirst by becoming absorbed in the beauty of the sacred face of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidi Ala Hazrat rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi is telling us that on that day there is no way to be saved from the harshness and the difficulties of Qiyamah except through the intercession and the generosity of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Hence he is making dua that to oh Allah on that day 
day when the intensity of the heat will be so severe and none will care about one another, then on that day afford us that blessing of being amongst those who will be blessed with kafir by the blessed hands of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Ya ilahi jab zabani. Ya ilahi jab zabane baharaye pyaas se Ya ilahi jab zabane baharaye pyaas se साहिबे को सर शहे जूदो अता का साथ हो साहिबे को सर शहे जूदो अता का साथ हो Irrespective of this, today we're talking about loving the family of the Prophet والسلام, respecting the progeny of Prophet and how some the Allah of Rahmatullah they showed reverence and respect for Sadat. Waqas uh, is there any beautiful account would you like to share with Brother Ichan? One account, account, an amazing account that once Sayyidina Allah Rahmatullah was called to somebody's house, was invited to somebody's house. And in them days, uh, the ulama, the scholars, they were transported in chariots. It's like a carriage which four people hold on their shoulders. So, Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Rahmatullah, he gets into this chariot and he's going towards his destination. And he suddenly tells the chariot to stop and he comes down. And he says to the chariot holders who are holding the chariot on their shoulders, Which one of you is a Sayyid? I can smell the fragrance of a Sayyid oh, coming. God. First, one of them was a Sayyid. He was very anxious. You know, he did, you know, what's going to happen here. So then Sayyidi Allah has insisted, tell me which one of you is a Sayyid? And the one that was a Sayyid, a descendant of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Huzur, I'm a Sayyid. Sayyidi Allah has said, Rahmatullah, ask him for forgiveness. Please, I'm sorry, forgive me, forgive me. He said, Huzur, it's okay, don't worry. No, no, please forgive me, please forgive me. He says that Sayyidi Allah has continuously asked for forgiveness. Allah has asked for pardon by saying, please forgive me. What would I do on the day of Qiyamat if the Holy Prophet asks me concerning this incident and says to me that I show disrespect to his family? He said, what if the Prophet asks me, Allah. is it what my family is for, to carry you on your shoulders? Allah. The Sayyid accepted Allah Hazrat's apology. He said, it's okay, Zul, don't worry, I accept your apology. But that wasn't enough for Sayyidi Allah Hazrat. Allah Hazrat says that now you get into the chariot, I will carry you on my, you on my shoulders. Allah. And the whole people, they all see that the Imam of the Ahl Sunnah, the Mufti of the time, the leader of the time, is carrying a chariot bearer on his shoulders. But for Sayyidi Allah Hazrat, Rahmatullahi, this was no ordinary chariot holder. This was a descendant of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is how Allah Hazrat compensated for that, just for carrying, for a, a, a Sayyid, carrying Allah Hazrat on his shoulders. Allah Hazrat says, you, I will carry you as well on my shoulders. Then it, Allah Hazrat hoped that that would do justice. Can you imagine the respect that Allah has shows to the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And today again, if we find out somebody is a Sayyid, maybe somebody is working for us as a Sayyid, how do we treat them? In our, in our communities, our neighbors, if somebody is a Sayyid, then how do we uh, accommodate them? How good are we to them? Or how, do we, uh, how, how much do we respect them? How much is it do we give to them? So we must make sure that we respect uh, the family and the progeny of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Hold heartily and as much as we can, inshallah. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Uh, dear respected viewers, what an amazing account. This shows that how much love Sayyidi Allah's rahmatullahi ta'ala possessed. Let me mention you another beautiful account. Uh, it says, Yukaz Bay Sayyidi Mehdi Hassan Mia, Sahab Sajada Nasheen of Marahna Sharif, he says that whenever I used to come to Allah's uh, rahmatullahi ta'ala and uh, he would serve food with his own hands to me. And he would make my hands wash by himself. Sure. Meaning he would pour water so that I could wash my hands. And uh, once he was pouring water so that I could wash my hands, he saw that I was wearing uh, rings. So he said, uh, 
prince could you please give these rings to me and uh, i took them off and i gave it to alazad and then from there i went to uh, bombay to other city and from there i came to my own place marahla my daughter fatima came and said uh, abba uh, from bareilly molana sahib meaning alazad rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi sent one parcel it also includes one letter and uh, in that parcel there are a few rings and he sent to us and on that letter it is written oh princess these rings are for you because they are of gold allahu <laughs> akbar and the reason why because uh, gold is not allowed for the male allahu akbar so this was the beauty of sayyidi alaz rahmatullahi ta'ala alay how beautifully he gave that message to sayyids and subhanallah that's how he used to respect and he also sent the uh, what you call the rings which were owned by the owner they were also sent back subhanallah how beautifully he explained and he also sent that ring back to the owner also and this is the way for us to learn the reverence and respect he used to have allahu akbar for sadat waqas uh, bhai as we are talking about sayyidi ala rahmatullahi ta'ala alayh and how he would show love for sadat ikram <coughs> would you like to share subhanallah when uh, sayyidi ala hazrat rahmatullahi was asked about the penalty that should be given to any sayyid for transgression if a sayyid ends up in court what should happen sayyidi ala hazrat was asked about this so he says that even though a judge is called upon to declare judgment and punishment upon a sayyid and the penalty that he has decreed is within the tenets of islam the judge should not have the intention the niyyah that he is punishing the sayyid rather he should think that a small amount of mud has appeared has smeared itself on the sayyid's feet which he is merrily washing away or as i says that when the judge is even giving uh, a penalty to a sayyid in a court for transgression he should never think that he's punishing the sayyid what should he say that little bit of mud has come on the feet of the sayyid i'm just taking the mud away this is ishq ishq for the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even when giving that penalties this is what their thought is this is what should be the intention at that moment the intention at that time it's amazing just to think that how much love how much devotion somebody has for anything which is attached to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even such extent that you know when they go in front of courts and judges what you know should be given what sentence should be given what the judge should be in thinking what the judge's intention should be why because all to do with the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam again me you the views of madhi channel where is our thinking and how do we treat the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when we see them how do we react to them we should get the love and affection and devotion get to us from them and inshallah ask them for the intercession of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam maybe just to this act and amal of ours of respecting the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that this could be the one that please the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i guess our shafaat done for us and our intercession into jannah inshallah subhanallah subhanallah dear viewers of madri channel let's now include few ashar from kalam of ala hazrat rahmatullah ta'ala alayh as we have selected today ya ilahi har jagah teri ata ka saath ho jab pade mushkil shahe mushkil kusha ka saath ho in this ala hazrat rahmatullah ta'ala alayh is talking about various difficult times which relate to here after and uh, he is talking about the time when book of deeds will be opened he says ya ilahi namae amal jab khulne lage oh allah tbarak wa taala when my book of deeds will start to open at that moment when my book of deeds will be opened khulne lage ab poshe khalq ke sattare khata ka saath ho at that moment me i have the company of mustafa sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam who hides mistakes of others allahu akbar who covers the mistakes of others allahu ghani i also pray that at that moment in time that our mistakes are hidden may allah tbarak wa taala forgive us and we get the company of mustafa sallallahu taala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim at that moment in time insha allah insha allah our mistakes will be covered if this dua is accepted Ya ilahi namae ama 
قتل جب کھلنے لگے یا الہی نام آئے آما جب کھلنے لگے عیب پوشے خلق ستارے خطا کا ساتھ ہو عیب پوشے خلق ستارے خطا کا ساتھ ہو سبحان اللہ ریسپیکٹڈ ویورز اف مدر نیشن فدر اعلی حضرت رحمت اللہ تعالی نے سیز جب چلوں تاریخ راہ پل سرات آفتاب ہاشمی نور الہدا کا ساتھ ہو یا الہی جب سرے شمشیر پر چلنا پڑے رب سلم کہنے والے غم زدا کا ساتھ ہو ان دس کپلیٹ آنا سے دیس ٹوکنگ اباؤٹ پل سرات جو یو نو ورس پل سرات پل سرات اس تین دن ہے پل سرات اس شاپ دن سوڈ اللہ اکبر اور دیٹ پل سرات which is built on back of جہنم اللہ غنی that is darkest place And Allah Hazrat is talking about that night which will be Tariq Rahe Pul Surat, that road, that passage which will be very dark at that moment. May I have, subhanAllah, the company of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama and he is referring Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama of Ta'abi Hashmi Nurul Huda. He is talking, he is metaphorically saying Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama is a son, Allahu Akbar. And when this of Ta'abi Nurul Huda will be there, right? The one who gives hidayat, such nur which guides towards right path. If that son of Nur al-Huda will be there, then that Rah, that passage, he will be there to guide me to cross that bridge of Sirat. And when that sun will be there, then that darkness will go away. And then he says, Ya Ilahi, jab sare shamshir par chalna pade. Because that bridge of Sirat is like a sword, sharper than sword. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. He says, when that time comes, when I have to cross that bridge of Sirat, which is sharper than sword, what happens? Rabbi Sallim, kehne wale gham zuda ka saath ho. The one who removes worries and difficulties, gham zuda, here is referred who Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And what dua Rasulullah will have there? He is referring that dua, Rabbi Sallim, O oh Allah, Make him cross peacefully, Allah. But this will be the dua of the tongue of Mustafa, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, on that day, how beautifully he has brought in this dua, and he is saying, Ya ilahi, jab chalun, tariq rahi, pul sarat. Ya ilahi, jab chalun, tariq. راہ پل سیغات یا الہی جب چلو تاریک راہ پل سیغات آفتاب ہاشمی نور ال خدا کا ساتھ ہو آفتاب ہاشمی نور الخدا کا ساتھ ہو یا الہی جب سر شمشی پر چلنا پڑے یا الہی جب سر شمچیر پر چلنا پڑے رب سلم کہنے والے غم زدا کا ساتھ ہو رب 
بسلم کہنے والے غم زودا کا ساتھ ہو فارن ہدایت یا الہی جب رضا خواب گرا سے سر اٹھائے دولت بیدار عشق مصطفیٰ کا ساتھ ہو سبحان اللہ Dear respected viewers, in this couplet, Allah Azzat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi is talking about Ya Allah Azza wa Jal from the deep sleep of my qadr when I wake up, when I get up towards mahshar, Allahu Akbar. At that moment, may I have the fortune of love of Mustafa Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi wa Sallam with me. Because if that will be with me, if I will have the love of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam with me, then inshallah all calamities, all problems will be sorted. Allahu Ghani and the respected viewers of Madani channel, definitely those ushaqan rasul, those they love Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, they will have a peaceful sleep inshallah in Qadr. And another uh, poet he has written, قبر کی نین سے اٹھنا کوئی آسان تو نہ تھا ہم تو محشر میں انہیں دیکھنے آئے ہوئے ہیں انشاءاللہ عز و جل یا الہی جب رضا خواب گران سے سر اٹھائے یا الہی جب رضا خواب گیرا سے سر اٹھائے یا الہی جب رضا خواب گیرا سے سر اٹھائے دولت بیدار عشق مصطفیٰ کا ساتھ ہو دولت بیدار عشق مصطفیٰ کا ساتھ ہو Dear respected viewers, today we are talking about loving Sadat. We are talking about loving the family of the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. But Qasbay, final message. The final message would be that these gems of the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. we need to research about them. We get the books of Sira and see who are these pious personalities. Implement their lives upon ourselves. Read about them, learn about them, teach your children about such personalities about the Sahaba Ikram, about the blessed wives of the Prophet sallallahu and inshallah implement their lives in our lives inshallah. Mashallah, mashallah. Beautiful message. And in the end, I would like to conclude a very faith refreshing account of Sayyidi Allah rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi's son. We're talking about loving Sadat. We're talking about loving uh, Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam's progeny. Now, throughout the life of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, that clearly reflects that how much love and reverence he possessed for the family of Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. But dear respected viewers, he also imparted that love in his children. Now, there was a murid of Mufti Azam Hind Mustafa Raza Khan Rahmatullahi Ta'ala son of Sayyidi Ala Azam Rahmatullahi Ta'ala He was talking about his pizza. He was talking about his Shaykh, that he is Mufti Azam, Allahu Akbar. That person, when he heard the, the praise of the Shaykh, he said that you say uh, Ala Azam and you say Mufti Azam and you see, he, he said these words. He said, okay, I will go and I will ask one question from your shaykh and he won't be able to answer that. Allahu Ghani. Dear respected viewers, now that person goes uh, to the court of Mufti Azam, uh, Mustafa Raza Khan, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. And he was present there. He asks one question that, uh, I've got a question. He said, okay, ask what is the question? He said, how many daughters of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa are there? Now, he became quiet and he went inside of the Azam Hind. Now that person would come, look, I asked a very simple question. Okay, he has gone inside to look in the books. He doesn't even know the names of the daughters of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa and you were praising too much, Allah. Because he got the point to say, it. so that person uh, who had brought him with him, he was also a bit worried now. He's talking like this, why he's got inside. Why is God inside? Now when Mufti Azam Hind Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi, son of Allah comes back, he, his face was wet. 
like he has performed hudu when it was asked that why did you go inside what was the reason he said because i had to mention the names of the daughters of mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam i do not mention them without wudu and i had gone in to do wudu and now he mentioned the blessed names Ashur. of the daughters Ashur. of mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam this was the love of the family of ala hazrat now you can imagine how much love sayyidi ala hazrat would possess for the family of mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wasallam that's all for today keep watching madani channel will bring another beautiful episode of imam of ahli sunnah until then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh imam muhammad rida imam ahli sunnah imam ahmad rida imam muhammad rida imam ahli sunnah imam